What's up everybody welcome back to another video within the generative AI series and in this video we'll continue to talk about real-time API which was released by OpenAI a few weeks back. So in the previous video if you haven't watched it I'm gonna hook it up into the cards make sure you go ahead and watch it because we lay off a lot of strong foundation about what real-time API really represents. What is the architecture around it? What do you can expect? How to use it? Uh, what are some of the hits and misses? And we also demo a few stuff. So, uh, and one more detail is like we establish uh, like the foundation of our code upon which we'll continue to build in this video. So just a quick recap how Realtime API really helps us. So in order to build voice bots and in order to use such bots, you know, uh, in replacement with, you know, customer representatives, or you know, uh, if you if you need some banking information, if you want these voice bots to operate uh, with human beings, obviously accuracy is one thing, but the most crucial aspect is latency. So even if you need an online therapist, a banking representative, a customer representative, a sales representative, uh, before you go ahead and talk about the accuracy, you have to talk about the latency. Now, how good is the voice bot, uh, you know, in terms of conversing. So that's the crucial aspect. So real-time API sort of solves it through WebSockets. So beforehand, uh, like a year back, if you wanted to build voice bots, you would, you would use a lot of moving parts. You would use uh, a separate transcription service, a separate, uh, you know, text to speech service. And, you know, you would, require OpenAI's uh, LLM or any open source LLM to sort of generate or stream a particular response. So it was, you know, it was all over the place and not the best system in terms of, you know, uh, adhering to low latency. So real-time API, given that you have a bi-directional communication, uh, in this particular case, you establish a connection and you go from there, like you send events and you receive events from the server, which can be text or audio. So that's one thing. And currently real-time API only supports uh, GPT-4 or preview. Uh, it has a separate mention of that particular version of the LLM as well. So in the previous video, as I was telling you guys, uh, we established a ground foundation for our code and uh, in this video, we'll continue to edit it and take it one step further. So the target of this uh, video is to establish a text-based conversation first. And in the next video, we'll start working with audio formats. So once you have the whole loop set up, the conversational loop set up, it's kind of easy to move it to audio then. Um, so just a quick uh, review. Uh, regarding the functionality, you have native speech to speech, no text intermediary, well, because of which it's low latency. And you have natural steerable voices, uh, you have simultaneous multimodal outputs, and you can find a lot of uh, different details if you're interested within the documentation here. So uh, let me dive back into the code. All right, so I moved a few things. I'm just going to walk you through it first. Firstly, I'm using .env to uh, sort of uh, pull in my environment variables, which definitely includes uh, my OpenAI uh, uh, API key. And I have this library regarding WebSockets, which is WS. I am using a read line to sort of grasp the input from the user, because uh, as a user, I need to prompt First, obviously, ask questions, in other words. So we need some mechanism for that, which is not addressed in the documentation. So this code here is uh, it uses some bits, which is in the documentation, but I've written some stuff over it. All right, so uh, here we have uh, the status types for the response we get from the real-time API. And I told you, like... Uh, uh, the response type delta is more like when you're receiving a streaming response, you receive deltas first, and then you receive an end event, which is called a response type done. So hence, uh, we'll be using uh, these two uh, milestone events 
or type of events within our code. So I have some data here, which is I'll explain why do we need it. Uh, next, I sort of initialize my read line interface, which I'll be using the terminal for now to sort of communicate. So uh, this instance would sort of help me. So I have a few callback methods, but before coming back to these, let me talk about socket initialization first. So we have this URL as we talked about in the previous video as well. We have GPT-4 or real-time preview. So this is the version of the LLM that we're going to use. And this endpoint sort of helps us to connect to uh, the sockets. So here we initialize our WebSocket connection. Uh, author providing the authorization is compulsory. Um, if you guys are aware of the authorization and authentication workflows, uh, you might know what we're doing here. We're using Bearer and OpenAI API key is more like our token. So this will help us, uh, you know, uh, authorize or help us access the, the WebSocket. Next, I use organization, hence I'm yeah, using uh, the OpenAI project here. This is for my billing so that uh, I have different projects, so I need my billing to be capped as per the project. So it's not compulsory. Uh, you can skip this part. But you do have to mention uh, OpenAI beta and you have to mention real-time v1, uh, which basically represent the version of the API that we are using. I have a few callbacks here on error. I just show the error uh, on my terminal. Uh, once uh, the connection is open or the connection is established, I call a start conversation method over here. I'll walk you through this method in a while. And then uh, once I receive a message from the uh, real-time API, uh, this particular uh, callback would be invoked, which would be uh, on message. And I have my function written over here. So this is everything regarding socket initialization, very basic stuff, uh, no fancy stuff here. All right, let's dig into our callback methods. So I'll start with uh, start conversation. So uh, I'm using my read line instance over here to uh, prompt a question. And I just say, like, enter your prompt. That's the best I got. So uh, once I get the prompt, once as a user, when I write the prompt and uh, everything is done, then I need to send an event to the real time API. And this event is more like, uh, so all these events have a specific type. So as mentioned in the previous video, uh, we have all the documentation lined up here. So you can go here and you can grab all the details about client events. So here's a bunch of client events right here. And then we have server events. So you can go ahead and, you know, sort of go through it on your own. So what do you need to know for now is like, uh, uh, there are several events that sort of kickstart the conversation. And those events basically are, let me just quickly show it to you here. So you use response create to send this event to trigger a response generation. And there is another method. If you go ahead and watch some stuff about uh, or read some stuff about real-time API, you would see people creating or using conversation dot item dot create event as well. Now, both of them can be used. Um, so for this particular event, you have to mention the previous item ID. So with every event that you uh, sort of send off, you can assign an ID to it. And if you want it to be like a trail of conversation, you have to track those previous IDs and provide it into uh, the next event that you send. Currently, I'm not doing that. I'm just keeping it simple for the sake of the demonstration. So I'm just using response or create over here. And next, I'm using response. Uh, I'm actually mentioning my modality, which is just text for now. We'll be using the audio modality in the next video. And I give a basic instruction like, hey, you're a high school math tutor and help the user with this question. And this question is basically the prompt which is uh, a question posed by the user himself. So that's everything about starting a conversation. Yeah. Okay, so next we come to incoming messages, which is when you receive a particular message from the uh, real-time API. So you parse the response, and now you end up checking the response type. So you either get a response type delta, which means you're getting a stream response, and there might be some tokens remaining, which you'll receive. So in that case, we just concatenate 
the message into this empty string. And that's basically the use of the data string over here. So we keep on just appending the uh, messages. And once we get the response type done event, which means, dude, you received all the messages. I'm done. When the server says I'm done, this is basically when this event basically uh, hits. So you can use the concatenated string and you can sort of show it on your screen here, which I'm doing console.log. I'm putting a next line over here as well. I sort of uh, reinitialize my data string to empty string so that other conversations can be accommodated. And I call the start conversation method. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, this whole thing is wrapped up by try and catch. And if I get any error, which I didn't encounter any till now, so it will be presented to me. So this is basically a very simplistic workflow, which will help you build a textual conversation uh, using real time API. And using this textual conversation, you can build upon audio conversation, which we'll cover in the next video. Hold your horses. OK, so let's demo this beast and let's see. Uh, I'm going to keep my question simple. So, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Node index.mjs. OK, connected to the server. Enter the prompt. What is 2 plus 2? Sure, 2 plus 2 equals 4. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Perfect. And we have this whole thing here, uh, which is more like a loop. Uh, enter your prompt here again, which is like you started a conversation, it sort of received the message, and then it initiated the next step of the conversation. I'm going to go ahead and ask, what is 3 plus 5? And sorry for the confusion earlier, the answer to 3 plus 5 is 8. If you have any more questions, I'm here to help. So slight different in sort of rephrasing. Let's try a different thing. Uh, what is square root of four. The square root of four is two. If you have any other question, feel free to ask. So there you go. A very simplistic stuff. Uh, but you might be appreciating the fact that this is really quick. This is even quicker than assistance, right? Hence uh, the real time API, uh, which provides you a near real time experience. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and the next video. Stay tuned because we're going to build some interesting stuff out of this. Uh, we'll be moving on to audio files and eventually we'll be building our voice bot. And I cannot wait to name it something interesting, which doesn't resonate to the Marvel Universe. I'll see you in the next video.